welcome uh, today uh, we shall look into the uh, various types of uh, flow measuring devices which are used in the natural gas industries uh, uh, you might have known that there are many many uh, devices which can be used for measuring the flows but in case of natural gas we use a few of those uh, measuring devices which are used in general so we shall be focusing on a few types of uh, flow measuring devices for natural gas now in this particular lecture we shall be learning about a differential flow meter and that is orifice meter which is the most widely used flow meter in the natural gas industry the differential flow meter this name signifies that it is measuring the differential pressure drop that is caused during the uh, flow of any fluid through a pipeline or a over a surface uh, as i was telling that there are many many uh, flow meters available but in case of natural gas the following are some of the most commonly used flow meter meters first is the differential flow meter that is orifice meter then there will be elbow meter turbine meter then positive displacement meters under this again we have two types one is reciprocating and rotary and ultrasonic meter and coriolis meter so i shall be talking of all of these one by one but i shall be going in detail on the orifice meter which because this is the most widely used meter and it is quite simple to use so in this particular lecture we shall be looking into the orifice meter now why do we need uh, to measure the flow uh, we need the flow rate because whenever we want to quantify the amount of gas being supplied uh, from the supplier to the customer over some period of time so we would like to know that how much quantity how much uh, amount we have been given and how much amount we have been uh, using because based on that we shall be uh, the cost will be decided how much cost i shall we have to pay so that is why it is necessary for us to know the flow rate and it is important for both the customer as well as the supplier uh, uh, generally the uh, amount in uh, case of gases is given in terms of the volume and conventionally these volumes are given in terms of or multiples of 1000 cubic feet and most commonly used is the mc f million cubic feet now what are the various criteria to choose some flow metering uh, device so first is the accuracy we need there are many many flow meters of which will give us different type of accuracies so depending on the kind of use in hand we shall have to decide that how much accurately we want to know the flow rate then the range of the flow and the temperature because when we talk of gas especially the temperature plays a role because it decides the density of the gas and the density uh, changes the volumetric flow rate for a given mass flow rate the type of the uh, fluid whether we are handling liquid or whether talking of gas and the expected useful life that how long the flow meter is intended to be used of course the cost factor comes in this case we have to look into both the capital cost that pertains to the uh, money we have to pay to purchase it uh, that is the uh, capital cost and operating cost during its operation what are the various cost involved in including the installation the maintenance all these costs come under operating cost and if some flow meter is needing some external power for its activation uh, we shall we shall find that in some of the flow meters we need um, external power so whether there is uh, this power available at the given point of use or not so accordingly also we have to choose the flow meter and uh, next is the 
availability of parts whether because this comes especially when we talk of the maintenance because if, while we are using it if there is any kind of failure we should be able to replace it or we should be able to repair it so for that we need to have the spare parts available for the particular flow meter now coming to the differential flow meter let us see that uh, how it works in this case what we do that generally any fluid when it flows uh, in an open channel or a closed channel uh, due to drag uh, there will be a pressure drop now drag as you know that drag is a resistance to the flow of a fluid now this drag may be coming due to the uh, skin friction that is uh, the friction between the surface over which the fluid is flowing and this comes due to the due to viscosity and it may be due to form drag and the form drag comes into picture whenever there is kind of a tortuous that means non straight line path of the fluid that is there is some kind of change in the direction of the fluid flow then we get the form drag so because of the drags there will be some uh, pressure drop along the flow path of a fluid however uh, this uh, del uh, this pressure drop may not be substantial over a short path and we may if i want to measure the uh, pressure drop we, we are, i might have to use a very long linear length so in that case it may be infeasible to install a flow meter over a long length of the pipeline so for that what we need we need to artificially create a pressure drop now pressure drop on one hand is going to help us in measuring the flow on the other hand it also means that we are losing the energy and um, it is necessary for us to see to it that we do not create so much restriction on the flow path that the pressure drop is very substantial and if the pressure drop increases too much then we will find that the pumping power will also increase so whenever we are talking of putting up any kind of restriction on the flow path of a fluid we have to decide the restriction very carefully so that we put enough restrictions we, that can give us enough uh, pressure drop that can be measured over a finite length of the pipeline so in that way we have to look into the uh, pro provision for the restriction now uh, we put some kind of restriction on the flow path for pressure drop measurement and then this pressure drop is measured by some sensor now after this there is whatever delta um, pressure drop that is delta p is measured based on that we develop some kind of theoretical formula to get the volumetric flow rate and this flow rate is generally computed by the bernoulli equation so bernoulli equation perhaps all of you know that it's an equation which is based on the energy balance and that bernoulli's equation we use to uh, derive an expression for the uh, volumetric flow rate now first uh, before going to the theoretical derivations let us look into the various components of a differential flow meters these components are uh, same for the various types of differential flow meters um, please mind it uh, not only orifice meter we have other differential flow meters like venturi meter so this is applicable for that meter also so we have a primary element and what we mean by primary element is this that this is the element which restricts the fluid flow to produce the differential pressure across a finite pipe length and then we have secondary element which means that this will be this will record or indicate the delta p that has been caused by the restriction and this delta p is measured across some pressure taps we have some two pressure traps uh, on the pipeline well, across these pressure traps the delta p is measured and it consists of some kind of gauge or a set of gauges means either i can have a differential pressure measuring device or i can measure the pressure at the two pressure traps and take the difference so in either way i may have a single gauge or i may have a set of gauge so these constitute the secondary element now coming to the orifice meter it is the most commonly used uh, flow meter in the industries because of its simplicity 
of operation, simplicity of design and installation. So, the orifice meter is the most commonly used um, flow metering device. Now, what, he, what it has? It consists of a thin plate. If you have a simple a plate, uh, of course, this has to be machined properly uh, with a concentric hole. That means, it is a, or, this is a circular plate with a concentric hole generally, but sometimes we also use eccentric hole. Eccentric means the hole is not having the same axis as the axis of the plate. So, they have two different axis. So, that way we may also use eccentric uh, holes, but uh, generally uh, concentric holes or orifice meters are very common. And this plate will be held by flange between the two pipelines or some kind of holding device. And then pressure troughs are provided at some designated locations upstream and downstream of this orifice meter. And all these pressure taps locations have been standardized. Now, let us look here that here we see that there is some flow of some gas through the pipeline. And here we have the metering tube over tube. And here we see that by some flanging arrangement, we are holding and this is the orifice. This orifice here we see and these are the two flanges and uh, this gas is flowing through this pipeline and what happens as it is going through the orifice, the flow is converging and it converges and here you can see this edge of the orifice is not sharp edge, it is what we call bevel edge, edge and this beveling is done to slowly expand the gas because if the edge is very sharp then what will happen? There will be a lot of energy loss. So, that to reduce the energy loss, we make it bevel edge and then we will find that this flow converges here and slowly and slowly at some point it will start again expanding and again it will occupy the uh, whole fluid. It does not mean that a vacuum is created here, the fluid will also be here that this fluid which is here in these zones, they will be in quite uh, turbulent way. And this particular area where this because this area is getting constricted and after this orifice is passed, this area keeps on narrowing down. The minimum area attained by this particular stream is called the vena contracta and it gives us the smallest diameter of the flow stream. So, this is the way we visualize the flow of a fluid happening through an orifice meter. This is also applicable to any kind of liquid. And here we have the orifice plate holding device and as I said this is the orifice meter. Now, now as I was telling that there are various ways of putting the pressure traps. So, one way is that we put the pressure traps right over here um, in the flanges and they are flange type or uh, flange taps. And here what we are showing here that there we are finding that there are two different levels these levels are indicative of the manometric reading. Okay? Now, as we see if the flow is taking place from the left to right as is seen here, then definitely the pressure at the downstream tap will be lower than the pressure at the upstream tap that is indicated by some kind of this height of the column, liquid column. You can say this kind of a barometric column you can say. And here we have another type of tap, this is the pipe taps, here, here you can see these taps are located away from the flanges and even the distance between this tap and the orifice are also prescribed in the literature. Next we come to the various components of orifice meter, in this we have meter tube as shown in the figure, orifice plate holding device, then orifice plate, pressure taps and the straightening vents, these straightening vents are inserted on the upstream side of the meter to reduce the swirling action in the gas stream because the swirls cause lot of energy loss. So, we reduce the swirls by putting some kind of straightening vents. And now, let us come to the working principle of the orifice meter as I told you earlier that the gas is coming. Now, in this to analyze it, what we do? We demarcate some points like this is the 1, point 1 indicates some point on the upstream side and then 2 it demarcates the point right inside the orifice and then 3 at the vena contract and 4 again at the fully developed region on the downstream side of the orifice. And here we have shown the kind of typical dimension of the pipe. 
okay and here we have shown some manometer which is measuring the pressure drop across the orifice meter now coming to uh, the analysis what we do that we use the bernoulli's equation between point 1 and 2 as shown in the figure now here we are writing the various terms in the bernoulli's equation uh, first uh, term is the uh, is representing Uh, the uh, we know that in bernoulli equation we have three terms uh, pressure energy then potential energy and the uh, kinetic energy so first term is indicating the pressure energy second term the kinetic energy and third term is the potential energy and in this bernoulli equation this is a bit modified that uh, from what we learned in our school that here in this case we include two more terms on the right hand side this is not really given in our school days here these two terms on the right hand side show the effect due to any kind of work done by or on the system and in this the wf shows the uh, work done due to the friction so this is the engineering bernoulli's equation that is a modified form of the bernoulli equation where we assume the uh, or neglect the all the frictional uh, losses and other works so the this v is the specific volume that is the reciprocal of the density p is the pressure u is the average linear flow velocity at a given point uh, over a cross section and g is the acceleration due to gravity z is the vertical distance from some datum and w is the work done by the flowing fluid and wf is the work lost due to friction so after writing the bernoulli's equation what we do that we readjust the equation and neglecting the potential energy loss because the potential energy is if the uh, flow meter is horizontal then we can neglect the change in the potential energy by assuming that we can write this equation and in this case we put some kind of an parameter c this c accounts for any kind of losses due to the uh, turbulence or any other loss so this c and here we say that on the right hand side we are keeping zero that means this c is incorporating all the work effects during the flow of the uh, fluid so this is the way we are simplifying the bernoulli's equation and once we integrate uh, we integrate by assuming some average um, a uh, specific volume of between the points 1 and 2 and this is especially necessary in case of compressible fluids like gases for liquids this may be assumed to be constant but for gases we have to be careful so we use some kind of an average specific volume and then we integrate this um, uh, kinetic energy term after this we rearrange the equation like this to um, on the left hand side we have the uh, change in the kinetic energy on the right hand side we have the change in the pressure energy and these are the pressures p1 and p2 the pressures which are measured by the pressure gauge here we are using the rho average the density average now what we are doing that we are representing the mass flow rate in terms of the product of the density the velocity and the area of cross section this 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 product area of cross section into the velocity is the volumetric flow rate into the density gives the mass flow rate now after this we can rearrange the equation to obtain this equation and that i'm not explaining this in this equation this beta is the ratio of the diameters at point 2 and at point 1 that and you can see that d2 is always less than d1 so beta will always be less than unity and then what we are doing that we are again representing the average density by a some gas law in this equation this gamma g is the specific gravity z is the compressibility factor t is the temperature and p is the pressure r is the universal gas constant and 29 is the molecular weight of air because this gamma g is defined as the density of the gas to the density of the air then what we do that because in case of gases we always refer to some standard condition so we again define 
the density at some standard condition uh, like this that in this case we write the same gas law but now we put the standard pressure and ta standard temperature and now we put the mass flow rate in terms of the standard conditions we must remember the mass flow rate will remain the same irrespective of pressure temperature but the volumetric flow rate will change depending on the pressure and temperature so after this rearrangement now what we see that we write the volumetric flow rate by considering the above equations and here we put that if you manipulate the equation you will find some constant k will come and then the delta h in this delta h is the differential pressure in terms of the head head of the fluid now this fluid may be uh, water this may be mercury so it can be something appropriate liquid it will be so this delta h is representing the differential head and then we have all the other parameters here and ultimately we get put the uh, area of cross section a2 in terms of the diameter and this is the pi by 4 d2 square and then we incorporate this d2 over here that is the orifice plate orifice diameter and then we obtain this particular equation again we get get some another parameter k prime one, once we are manipulating this equation now in case of uh, natural gas industry whatever equations we have shown this is given in terms of this particular equation c under root delta h into p and this uh, delta h is the differential pressure measured by the manometer c is some orifice flow constant and p is the absolute static pressure and orifice flow constant has been given in terms of many many correction factors about which we shall see now that in this case uh, these values will be given in terms of some table or some formula so we just see the significance of them the basic orifice factor it depends on the location of the taps and the internal diameter and the size of the orifice and this is given by some table in the literature similarly we have another correction factor Reynolds uh, number correction factor it depends on the pipe diameter viscosity density and the gas velocity and is given by this particular term in this case b is some base factor and is also obtained from some table given in the literature then we have the pressure base factor this applies to the change in the volume due to the pressure change and this is the uh, that factor pressure base factor this is a p is the base pressure some base pressure then we have temperature base factor is a correction for the base temperature if it is change it is different from 60 degree fahrenheit about 15 degree centigrade because the because of reason that gas volume uh, changes with the temperature so we have to put this correction and it is obtained by putting the charles law this is the if it rankine so in this case 520 rankine and this is this tb is in terms of rankine so we can also put it in terms of kelvin on other things so it will be either that means but it is the ratio of the absolute temperature either rankine or uh, kelvin in literature we will find that the values are given in terms of fps system so that is why you will find all the tables are also given in fps system it does not matter we can later on convert the uh, convert the units then we have the uh, flow temperature factor this corrects for the temperature variation and this flow temperature has two effects one is that if it is high temperature then the gas becomes lighter and the flow will tend to increase and if the this high temperature also causes gas expansion and then by expansion it will reduce the flow so this uh, this is applied to the average temperature during the time gas is passing and is given by this particular factor now we have the specific gravity factor what it is used for it is used to correct for the changes in the specific gravity and because it can change due to change in the density and which is a function of the temperature pressure so during the flow it this temperature pressure may change due to which the specific gravity factor will also cha change and uh, determined by the air with specific gravity of 1 and we have to have the proper correction for the specific gravity of gas and this is given in terms of the uh, square root of the inverse of the specific gravity 
Next we have the thermal expansion factor and this corrects for the any kind of expansion or contraction of the orifice because um, of the change in temperature if it is very high temperature the orifice will ex itself expand or the temperature is low it will contract. So, this contraction and expansion of the orifice with the temperature of the gas is corrected by this particular formula F A and these formulas have been given empirically. So, there is no theory behind this kind of things and then we have the super compressibility factor that is the compressibility factor this we have to again we use this kind of an equation to account for the changes in the pressure, temperature and specific gravity. Lastly, we have the manometer factor due to the uh, uh, this compensates for the column of the compressed gas because whenever we have this um, as, as I told you that the manometer contains some kind of um, liquid either water or mercury. So, if this mercury is existing and the there will be compression for the of the gas due to the presence of mercury. So, due to this there may be a change in the uh, delta p and this um, correction has to be given and this is the way the correction is provided uh, for the presence of the mercury. Uh, mercury. And then depending on the how the gauges are located in what at the what latitude and sea level that also have a effect on the uh, metering. So, for that we give this particular correction and this here this g is not uh, is the correction for the gravitational acceleration and this is given by this equation. In this equation we have L is the latitude and H is the elevation above the sea level. And next we have the uh, expansion factor it is used to correct for the density variation and it depends on the way the gas expands through the orifice and is a function of the differential pressure, absolute pressure, diameter of the orifice, diameter of the pipe and the type of taps and it is given in some table and this is a table in which this particular correction factor can be obtained. Now, there are many errors in measuring we should be aware of the errors uh, like a constant errors due to the inaccurate knowledge of the orifice bore then the contour of the orifice is not uh, put uh, properly concave or convex the dullness of the orifice edge uh, it may be the thickness of the orifice edge the eccentricity of the orifice whether they have the same axis with the orifice plate or not the excessive pipe roughness there, there are constant errors and variable errors are like this there will be pulse the flow may be pulsating there may be flow disturbances, then the pressure taps may not be located properly, then there could be with time there will be some deposition of the sediments, dirts, etc. There could be liquid accumulation due to the condensation at the bottom of some horizontal pipe, then liquid in the uh, pipe or the metering devices, then leakage around the orifice and change in the operating conditions from those uh, from the base conditions which have been used for in to derive the coefficient values. So, these are the some variable errors and then advantages is this that orifice meter is low cost especially for large sizes it, but there is no need of calibration then easy to install and maintain and widely accepted. Disadvantage is this it causes poor turn down um, that is the change between the maximum and minimum flow rate accept, uh, maximum and minimum flow rates that is turn down ratio. Then it have long installations about 20 d to 30 d, d is the pipe diameter it needs that kind of a length and the accuracy of the orifice meter depends on the geometry. So, this information can be obtained in more detail from these references. Thank you.